Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Sunday Drive and I hope you're as excited for this video as I am because we're finally back to doing POVs and today we're going to be discussing brake pads. So I put on the Hawk HPS 5.0 brake pads a few months ago and today we are going to finally talk about them and I'm going to give you my honest opinion of them. If you enjoy BMW or car content, you should consider subscribing and if you like the video, make sure to you know let me know in the comments down below and obviously hitting the like button. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop back in the driver's seat. All right, everyone, welcome back to the driver's seat. I know it's been a little while. I'm gonna leave the windows a little bit cracked today because I'm trying something new with the camera setup. And it's a great day outside. But today we are going to be discussing the Hawk HPS 5.0 brake pads. I'm gonna give you a brief but critical rundown of them. Now, this is just my experience with these brake pads. If you have had a different experience, maybe worse than mine or better, you're allowed to have your opinion. This is just mine and I kind of wanted to let you guys know, you know how I felt they were. I have now driven on these brake pads at the track as you saw a couple weeks ago and I have had them on the street for a few months in all sorts of different kinds of conditions so I think I can assess how these oh bad patch of road I think I can assess how these brake pads are pretty well and then of course at the end we'll do a bunch of brake tests for all of you because honestly what would a brake pad review be without a bunch of brake tests and hard stopping so starting off the discussion what are these brake pads like what do what purpose do they play in the car world Hawk says these brake pads give you, and I quote, give your vehicle the greatest stopping power and pedal feel without compromising ABS. So what do they mean by this? Well, as you may or may not know, when you upgrade brake pads or change your compound, there is no free lunch. There's always some kind of downside. So like you're always, it's finding the balance because you're going to give up something. And the idea is to give up the least amount and get the most benefit based on your needs for whatever you need a brake pad to do. There are three aspects about the brake pads we'll talk about today. One is going to be the pedal modulation compared to stock, temperature and different operating conditions, so cold you know, and hot, like brake fade. And then of course, what changes did I notice in ABS compared to stock? In the description down below, I have linked Hawk's full page on the brake pads, but Hawk has kind of a graph showing the pads, like the temperature, differences in the pads and like how they break. Of course, this is only a comparison within Hawk's own lineup. It's not really going to tell you compared to like maybe other brands because every brand's going to label them differently. But it does give you a good idea of what they're trying to go for with the brake pad. The Hawk HPS 5.0 pads also utilizes Hawk's ferrocarbon compound, which is it, which is a semi-metallic compound. Essentially, the purpose of this pad is to be safe and comfortable for a daily driver, but also give you the extra bite and higher, higher temp tolerance when it gets warm that the stock pads lack. Obviously, this is my daily driver. I drive this car every day, you know, even in the wintertime and crappy weather. So cold braking performance was very important on my mind when I was researching different brake pads. Now then, in the real world, how do these pads actually hold up? In my opinion, these pads hold up very well. The cold braking performance is a little worse than factory Techstar pads are. But honestly, once you do a few brakes, their cold braking performance is honestly just as good as stock. I do want to know if it is below 50 degrees Fahrenheit outside, like I think I had these once, it was like in the low 40s. If you're going to go performance driving, you definitely should be very conscious to actually do a few brakes and like warm them up before you just go like full aggro and you're driving. Because you will notice your first couple of brakes, they are going to not brake as well as you think that they would. And then even in normal operating conditions, I'd say like if it's above 70 degrees outside, really you don't have to wait, just go drive them. They're gonna warm up within two or three minutes of you driving them super easily with zero effort or trying. With that, they're in my opinion, they're not really they're not unsafe, they're not a burden to daily drive. They're very the braking, like emergency braking on the highway, even like from highway speeds, is very good. And I, I would not fret to have to run these again on a daily driver. The pedal modulation is also very good. The initial press is much softer, kind of similar to a factory pad, but once you well, once you like really get your foot into it, there's one behind me right now. It stiffens up really, I mean, all my stuff behind me. It really, it really gets really tight and it breaks the way you'd want a performance pad to do. Going along with daily drivability and just keeping your car nice is brake dust. And I'm happy to say that these do not produce a lot of brake dust. There is some more than a factory pad, but if you wash your car once a week, hit it with some light wheel cleaner. I use a touchless one. They, it comes off super easy and it will never stay on there. Unless, of course, you get a sticky caliper and totally bake your driver's front wheel, in which case you will have brake dust on there forever. Still have not gotten all of it off. On the topic of temperature, though, I do want to talk about the operating temperature of these pads. 
And honestly, I can agree with what the grab says. Once you kind of get them warm, you don't have to really get them to track temps per se, but once you get them like warm and drive the car for a little bit, braking stays pretty consistent throughout. I would say again, around that two to 300 mark, like you see in the graph, it definitely does get pretty good. And then after that, it falls off. If you are a hard track driver, you'll know that there are definitely better brake pads for the track. This is not a track pad. Hawk does not claim that it's a track pad. It is a street slash performance brake pad. That said though, even on the track, I thought these pads held up pretty well. Granted, when I tracked it outside, it was around low 60s degrees Fahrenheit. So I never really got to the point of fading, although I will say I have faded these pads before, and they do give you some warning. You can kind of tell it's starting to happen. But when I had them on the track, they definitely held their own. I'm sure if I was at it all day or if it was a lot hotter outside, eventually the pads may have started fading and I may have gotten some of that uneven, uneasy and unsafe braking that some people have talked about with these brake pads. Another thing with that is wear. Again, I don't have a ton of experience with them, but I have heard that people who are trying to track them get a lot of wear after a few sessions of hard braking, but take this with a grain of salt. I can't attest for this personally. But honestly, I would say that's okay. You're asking something, the brake pad, that's inherently not able to do everything, to do everything. And in the case of these brake pads, I would say that they hold up pretty well. I've been very happy with them. They're great on the street, they're very livable, feel very similar to a stock pad, but when you get them hot, you want to go to performance driving, they hold up a lot better than factory Techstar pads would. And then I'm heading towards the highway here, but before we hop on there, one other thing I have heard, and again, take this with a grain of salt, is that these pads squeal when they get really hot. I have not had these pads squeal at all. I'm gonna guess that anyone who has, either A, maybe there was something on the rotor or like different conditions, or B, the pads weren't bedded in properly, because I have, these pads have been super quiet. I have heard absolutely not a zip from them, which is something that going in, I actually didn't expect. Even when they were overheating, I still had zero noise from them. So again, just my opinion. So take that with a grain of salt, my experience of it. Maybe after I had them on for a couple of years and maybe they start wearing down more, they'll start squeaking. But so far, I've been really happy with these brake pads. That didn't sound too good. I'll have to diagnose that later. But where were we? Oh yes, brake pads. So now that we're on the freeway, I am gonna kinda do a couple of, I'm gonna speed up to like 80 or 90 and I'll do some hard braking for you guys. Just so you can kinda see for yourself how these pads really react when they get warm and at highway speeds. I was gonna drop the fourth, but I'm not really sure what that throttle stuff was. Uh, that's news to me and I'm kind of annoyed that the car's not throwing me a check engine light. Go figure, the one time I actually would rather have a check engine light and it doesn't give me one. speed up a bit here. Did pretty good. It was like a 90 to 70 brake. Is a hard one. Yeah, these pads, when they get warm, they're very, very good and punchy. I did want to do a bit more, but traffic's pretty bad right now, and I don't think I'm going to find anywhere to actually go kind of rip it. But hopefully this video kind of gives you a good idea of what these pads are like. Honestly, they feel very similar to a stock pad, but they just kind of give you that extra bite and like extra performance that you're looking for out of a pad when they get warm, which is just a lot of fun, and obviously, you know, if you're going faster, you want to be able to brake better to keep up. For that reason, I have been recommending these pads to all my friends on their daily drivers because I think that this is the closest you're really going to get to a hybrid brake pad because, honestly, most hybrid brake pads that I've seen or experienced, they kind of just fail at both daily driving and performance driving. And so far, th these haven't. These have been very nice. So, with that said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. This is just another quick little Sunday drive. I really wanted to talk about these brake pads because I heard a lot of mixed reviews on them and I kind of wanted to see for myself. 
And of course, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you never miss another one of my uploads. I will continue to run these brake pads and recommend them to everyone because I just think that they are absolutely fantastic. Next week or the week after, depending on whatever that funny stuff was with the, the throttle, uh, we're going to talk about the flywheel. But I do want to be able to kind of let the car have it, and if it's not up to the task, well, we'll figure it out. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.